Well, Richard, just 24 hours ago, you were a jockey. How does it feel now? Any regrets? Um, no, I think, you know, I, I, we'd obviously had time to think about the decision anyway. So um, I think I feel almost driving to Newton Abbey yesterday was almost the most nervous I've been going racing for, for a long time because I knew, you know, win, lose or draw, I was going to finish at the end of the day. Um, yeah, that's what, it's just, it's what I've been used to for a long time. Um, so, so, yeah, it was almost the, the build-up was almost worse than the, you know, obviously I was quite emotional when, when I told you that I was going to finish, but I think that was almost like a, not a relief, but it was almost a relief telling everybody because I, you know, myself and Dave Roberts and Philip Hobbs and Henry Daly, I, I'd, I'd let them all know and my family knew. So for about the last probably month, six weeks. Oh, so he'd been in the, <clears throat> the planning for that long? Well, j just on the run up to Cheltenham, I, I sort of, you know, I, I knew that I wasn't involved in the championship this year and I, yeah, I'm getting older and, and my body aches a bit more now than it um, does before. And so I just thought it was the right time for me. And again, after I rode Native River at Sandown, when he won, you know, I, I sort of, in my dreams, I thought, he, you know, he could win a Gold Cup again. And, and he, you know, he was the first British or so, but obviously he didn't. And if, if he'd have won at Cheltenham, you know, I probably, that, that was, I was going to finish that day. Um, and then I just felt that it was the right thing to do to, you know, finish before entry, so it was just trying to find a, you know, day that worked and 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 hopefully, it would again. It, we we went there with a good book of rides, and we were hoping that that one would would go go past in front, but it didn't happen. But actually, I think the most important thing for me was to ride my last ride for Philip. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's, only, it's only funny how things work out. But obviously, brother Ted, he, I won AP's last ever race at Sandown <laughs> on brother Ted, That's and then he was my last last ever ride. So. Um, but again, it's it's yeah, you know, it 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 actually went not smoothly as such, but it, you know, it went as well as I could have imagined it, and it, it you know, I'm, I'm happy with my decision. Is it is it true that you didn't retire on the last day because you didn't want to steal the thunder for whoever's going to be the the next champion jockey? Yeah, I, I didn't. I I felt that you know whether it's Brian Hughes again because he and I feel bad that you know him and his family didn't get the chance last year to have that day at Sandown, which which for me especially the first time as a champion, that, that was, you know, probably the best day of my career. Um, and I think, yeah, whether it's Brian or Harry, you know, I, that's their day. Um, and whoever's champion trainer, you know, it, 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 that's the day for them, really. And I, I felt like if I won the Gold Cup, I could retire, but if I didn't feel finishing finishing fourth, I thought was, you, you know, it was it was the Gold Cup winner's day then. So you, I, I just felt it was important to do it on the right day. I was just talking to your daughter, Willow, then. I said, are you pleased? Oh, you're going to see much more of Daddy now. And she said, yes. And I said, what about you, Percy? She said, <laughs> <laughs> but but it, like you say, there is a sense of relief that, you know, right, it's, it's you know, I've finally said no, I'm, I'm stopping, isn't it? Yeah, I think it just, again, it, for me, it was just, it, it's become the right time. And, um, yeah, I've got, you know, three children now and they're, they're all growing up. And I think, yeah, you know, they, they've, Fiona and the children have put a lot, or they've given up a lot for me as well, because, you know, whether it's, uh, doing things with them or even just going on holiday we, we had a 10-day window for, for a holiday in the summer for, for the last 10 years and, that, and that's you, you know what that wasn't sort of nego negotiable that was that was it and every other you know lots of families go on holiday at Easter or Christmas or all over the time and you know we we don't do that so it's I feel like they've you know they've given up a lot to support me so um yeah I think probably it's time to change that around. Look, you live in a beautiful, we're not far from Lempster here. This is your, this is your farm here that I just look around, there's bullocks and everything everywhere. You, your family farm is not far from here, is it? Yeah, well, my, my parents live about 20 minutes away, um, just outside Hereford. Um, but this is my mum's family home, um, obviously before we came here. And um, yeah, dad runs the farm all together uh, with my brother. And um, yeah, now I'll have to... I'll have, to, I'll have to do a bit more work as well. So, so were you always going to be a jockey? I mean, your, your, your parents both rode, mm. didn't they? Yeah, my dad rode as an amateur. Um, mum rode f for fun, and they'd all, you know, both sets of my grandparents had pointer pointers, and for, for, for them, horses was just, well, always fun and, and, and their, their hobby. Um, and I think growing up, I rode ponies a lot, and for me, it was, I think I looked at the farm and thought that looks quite hard work, and I, I thought being a jockey looks very glamorous. <laughs> I, was, I was watching you when I was growing up. <laughs> What, what were, you, were, you good, were you a good rider from, from the word go? Um, I, 
it depends who you speak to. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was quite, um, I was probably quite like my, 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 my two sons really, rather than my daughter. I was wanted to get from A to B as quickly as possible. Um, rather than there wasn't a lot of style involved. Um, but I think I just enjoyed, yeah, you know, the ponies and galloping around. And it's weird, my brother, you know, he, he never ever had interest to, to be, to, to ride or be with horses. He was always fixated on the farm and, and that was, you know, I think it just, yeah, we're lucky enough we almost went our different directions and that, and that really worked well. Were you, were you a competitive child? Yes. All right, <laughs> now we're getting to it. No, I think, yeah, do you mean it was, I had loads of fun at the local shows and Jim Carner and, and yeah, do you mean it was, yeah, that, that, that was our summers, you know, mum used to ferry me around all over the place and, you know, she, she was a huge part of probably, you know, my, my riding because, yeah, without her I wouldn't have, wouldn't have left the farm. So, um, you know, everything from Pony Club to, yeah, the local shows and I think, yeah, I, I just, I generally thought that was fun and a hobby. I, I just, I couldn't think of, you know, I thought you could get paid to work with horses. I mean, that was, you know, what else do you want to do? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, for me, it was, it wasn't a hard decision. It was, and I knew even at this early stage, I, I knew that there was every chance I wouldn't be a professional jockey, but I thought, you know, being a... Well, you didn't, well, you didn't think, well, you didn't think you'd be good enough? Or? Well, yeah, I thought, I, I thought I, you know, I, I went to David Nicholson's when I was, um, I think 15 or 14 for a week at the time and, and thought it was great. So I went to work there, but yeah, realistically, I think I had a slight deal with mum and dad that I'd do it for a couple of years because A-levels probably wasn't really going to suit, suit me. And, um, and then, yeah, I think then sort of, I thought I'd probably end up going to agriculture college and then coming back to the farm and I could still ride, you know, point of pointing and have lots of fun doing that. And that, I think that was more realistic than, you know, being a professional jockey. Were you, you, you first rode in a points point, didn't you? Yeah, um, 27th of January, uh, 1994. <laughs> <laughs> dear, oh dear. Um, at Larkill, I remember my granddad had Rusty Bridge, his own horse he bred, and um, had been running for a few years. And it was the first point of point that year. I, we, obviously, I'd looked up probably six months before. So I sort of said to him, can we please run at the first point of point so I can get my first ride? <laughs> and um, yeah, lucky enough, you know, he managed to get, it, get him there. And, you know, and, and yeah, it, you know, I've got great memories of that day. Um, you know, he, di he didn't win or anything like that, but it just, yeah, I definitely knew, knew from that moment, that's, I, I love doing it. AP McCoy always said that Jim Bolger, you know, sort of moulded the way, you know, he's a, again, a hard taskmaster. It was a sort of a, almost a sort of a military style, you know, education. <laughs> and I, I suspect it wasn't dissimilar at the Dukes. Yeah, no, and, but it, it was, and he, he had his way and that was the right way. Um, <laughs> But I think you know he was also very supportive and loyal because once you were in his in his team, like I, yeah, you know you had to follow his rules. But he he would support you and he would you know if there's ever a problem, you know he would he would he would be there to help. And, and Diana, you know I still you know speak to and see at the races and and, and you know she was a huge part of the team there as well. And, and it, well, it was like, you almost like a family. Um, and we did things, you know, all the lads. We played football together. We you know, go to the cinema together, you, you, you really, you, you did felt very comfortable and safe there. And I think that's why mum and dad were happy for me to go there at 16. And, you know, I think they felt like he would keep an eye on me, you know, not just, not just, I wasn't just an employee. It was also, you know, you were, you were somewhere that they felt safe. And, and yeah, I, I learned so much. And he, he yeah, if, if you got something wrong, you knew about it. Um, and you, you'd get, you'd get your rollicking. And then five minutes later, it was forgotten about. Um, do you think he helps your work ethic? Because that, that's sort of what really stands out from everyone else from the outside looking in, your unbelievable ethic. I think, yeah, I mean, you, you knew there if you didn't work or you didn't, you didn't, you, you know, do, do your job, you weren't going to get on and there was always a pecking order and you had to wait your turn. I think it was nearly two years before I had a ride off the Duke. I, you know, lucky enough to ride in point of points and for other trainers along the way. But, you know, you had to wait for your turn to, to have, have your first ride and then, I suppose you, you had to make the best of, of what, you know, the opportunity you had, but it was, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I couldn't thank, you know, the Duke enough and Diana for, for, the, for the way they, and even just the way you, um, you dressed going to the races, you know, you had to wear a shirt and tie and I probably slipped slightly later in my career of, of that, but you know, the whole, um, yeah, the way he, he ran things and the way he, he wanted you to do it was, 
was right, really. I'm so old, I can remember you arriving up at Warwick in the wearing room. You came in shirt and tie. You were with someone who looked like he'd been to Glastonbury, <laughs> and that turned out to be Chuck Thornton. <laughs> Chuck, was a bit Chuck, Chuck was a bit cooler than the time that I was. <laughs> so, so he, he was there at the same time. But, the, but Warren told me, he said that at the time, he was riding sort of second to, to Adrian Maguire. He said, but even then, you'd only just started. He thought, I ain't going to be second jockey here for very long. This kid is just, you, you just had everything, even at an early age. Um, I, I'm not sure about that. But I think, like, I was... I was Incredibly lucky as well. You know, Warren was there. He he was, you know, brilliant to me. He took me to my first ride under rules. And what was that like? Uh, well, the ride went really well. But on the way there, we went to Chris Broad's on the way, and that wasn't so much fun. <laughs> Chris Broad thought it was very amusing to to take the mick out of me and put me on a five foot on sprint that had never been off the ground. And t he told me it was a lead horse, and he kept refusing with me. <laughs> so um, so yeah, I'll never forget that that day. But um, but yeah, no, Warren was hugely helpful for me, and you know, lending me gear and just you know, he, yeah, do you mean? Those sort of people that help you when you start, it's, you know, and, and for advice and, yeah, he, you know, Warren was always very much, you know, you, if, if you've got your three or four trainers you ride for, you know, all, loyalty goes a long way and, and, you know, that stuck with me for a long time as well. You know, he, you know Warren definitely was a huge part of my first couple of years riding because, you know, I off, I'll often he'd give, give me a lift as well, but it's, um, you know, just his, his general advice. It's such a it's such a tough career. I think one in eleven rides is a fall, uh, and it's so hard to really get going. How are you so nice? <laughs> do you ever get in a bad? Well, I'm going to ask the owner about this in a minute. But do you ever get in a bad mood? Um, I get frustrated, but I think I get frustrated with myself more than other people because I, you know, you do because well, you set you set personal standards. Well, I think you, you 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 do things and you think like I wish I'd have done. You know, me and ADP used to come in, and, and we we're the only. I think we were the only two that sort of we, we used to complain to each other, because I couldn't really complain to a lot of people. Because you know, when you're riding 100 winners a season, you, you you can't complain to you know a lad that's riding 10 winners a season. Because I well, they they have every right to give me a slap for being 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 stupid. But just we could come in. And we used to, used to say I'd say at least once a day. I wish I could. You know, wish you could go back and ride it again because you, you you come in thinking, well, I'm sure if I'd done X, Y, and Z, you know, race would have been different. And it might not have been, but you know, when you you know when you come in at off the heat of the race, just you're, you're frustrated. If you get beat, you know, a, a short distance, you think, well, actually, you know, something else could have changed that. Um, but I think if you didn't have that sort of attitude, either you you probably shouldn't be a jockey either. So it works both ways. I, I knew you admired him, I knew you were friendly with him, but when he retired at Sandown to watch you, I mean you you literally you're an emotional person anyway, you literally sobbed. You know, you you it, it really affected you. Um I think I think I, I, I'm I'm literally yeah, you know, I, I can't even now I, I can't really believe the career I've had and yeah, I, I, I almost when he left, everyone thought I was delighted to see him go. Which, yeah, it, it obviously gave me that opportunity to become champion. But um, at the same time, you know, I, I really felt that he'd sort of helped me, and, and we'd had that rivalry that you know brought out the best in me, as well as you know, hopefully, you know, we sort of helped each other. But again, it's um, I enjoyed riding against him as well, and I, I did. I got a buzz when I beat him. Um, Cause how can you finish runner? I, I I'm trying to get my head around it, Richard. You know, how do you finish runner up 17 times to a man and and not have any animosity towards him? Yeah, but it wasn't his fault. It was my fault for not riding a minute enough winners. So, and I did, but I think. Do you know mental? I mean, there's there's a big you know mental health is such a thing at the moment. I mean, what what do you feel like every time knowing that you were coming up short for whatever reason? I think I was lucky to be in the position I was. Is that is that the way you? Is that yeah, the way I, you... like apart from AP, I I was, you know, able to ride more wins than anybody else. So I was, you know, everybody else would have given their right arm to to be in my position. So I just feel like if I was complaining, like I can be frustrated and that and that's fine, but I can't, you know, I I can't. Well, I, yeah, I'd have been annoyed at myself if I was complaining about riding a hundred plus winners a season, you know, riding nice horses. You know, when you look when you look around, I was in a very fortunate position, and, and I don't think, you know, I think that's just a, a sort of sensible, realistic way to look at it. And and again, it wasn't AP wasn't 
stopping me winning. It was I hadn't, I hadn't ridden, I had ridden, you know, I had to ride more winners than him, and that that wasn't his fault or anybody else's fault. I'm understanding now how really how how I, <coughs> I get it, and that the reason why you could chat to him and not to perhaps other people. I know you used to change change next to Noel Feely and and Tommy Skew, and but it's I, I sort of understand where you're coming from now. It's just I, I think, and we'd had a obviously we're different people and everything else, but I think we had a very similar mindset. And I think, you know, with the help of Dave Roberts, we we loved going racing. I'd, I'd look at the declarations I did two days ago. I, I, if I wasn't in a race, I'd be thinking, oh, have I ridden for any of those trainers? Could, you know, do, do you mean, I, I've always, you know, I look at the, the, the as soon as the entries come out at, you know, 12, one o'clock, I'm keen to, I, I like looking at the entries to see what, you know, I'm always thinking about what's ahead, and, and I think AP was the same. You know, you're always thinking where where's the next winner coming from? Because because you know the winner you've just ridden is brilliant, and you can it's nice to nice to have it, but you're only as good as your last winner, or you know hopefully your next one. So it's, it's, it's I, I important just, to it's important to get, try and try and look for, try and find the next one. Anyway. I could see that you're both incredibly uh, competitive people, but you're very very different in lots of ways. He's got a right piggy streak to him. You know what he's like. He's got a stubborn. He's got a real stubborn streak. But y y yourself, again, I, I just I can't quite. I, I don't know why. But you know, going down to last, all the jockeys say, you know, there was no one stronger than 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 Dicky go down to the last after the last. And yet you don't seem to have any killer instinct in you. Um, I, yeah, I, it's. <clears throat> I, I just I can't see. Personally, I I don't see why you have to have any animos an animosity to anybody else mm. to, 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 to do well. Like, yeah, out on the course, I want to beat whether it's AP or, you know, literally everybody and anybody. But, you know, as soon as you finished, I thought, I think sportsmanship is, 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 a, is a very important thing in life, let alone, you know, obviously the industry I worked in or other, other major sports. I think, you know, whether it's, you know, as an amateur point and point jockey or professional jockey or you know yeah, any, anything in life I think probably you know being or having sportsmanship stroke sort of manners goes a long way and, and that's always been sort of what, what I felt really. Have you ever second guessed yourself you know you me mentally have you ever thought you know, what am I doing wrong you know what you know judge throughout your whole career you know there's a lot of pressure you're riding the horses that you're riding People are paying a lot of money for these horses. You know, there's punters. There's you know, there's all sorts of different pressures. But have you ever felt, you know, uneasy or not happy in your own skin? There's always been. There's always been, especially when I was younger. I used to get, you know, come home and I'd ridden, or especially say I'd ridden two winners. And I should be delighted. And I'd, I'd look at the entry, the results, and UTAP's had three winners, and I'd be just thinking, whatever I do, I can't quite get to that point. And, and I, yeah, I used to get. But I just always felt that it, it wasn't someone else's problem, it was my problem. I, I didn't really, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't think I should be complaining about, to, to other people about it. I could... Do you, do, when you come home then, for, to Fiona, do you ever say, oh, this is, I just can't yeah, stand look, this, I cannot... Unfortunately, Fee probably, she bore the brunt of most, most of my um, grumpiness or moods or, and, 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 you know, and I think actually, actually having children was probably one of the best things for me, because actually, when you come home, even when Willow was first born, it, you know, it almost it's it's a, it's a distraction from, you know, what you're doing every day or what you, what your day job is. And I think, for me, that was actually a really a good thing. You know, obviously Fiona to start with. Actually, then children, it it gave me that that sort of, you know, when I was a bachelor, you know, living on my own, you, you come home after, you know, not probably a bad day, but not as good a day as you wanted, and you, you stew and you. You know, you, you, yeah, you get upset, and it, it actually doesn't. It's not going to do you any good for the the, the following day. So, I think, yeah, I've, I've learned to deal deal with that side of it. You know, through through I suppose through my career. And because so, so sometimes people say that a family can steal a, a sportsman's ambition because you you you, you you're, you've got other priorities. But it's obviously it sounds like it's helped you. Yeah, I, I again, it, it, I suppose every, everyone's slightly different. But for me, I suppose it's, yeah, it just it gave me. It, um, yeah, a, dist a slight distraction from the day to day, and you know, as, as being a jockey, it is seven days a week. Um, yeah, it's quite relentless, and, and uh, yeah, I think they they gave up a lot actually t to f for me to carry on doing it. You know, whilst whilst you know we've got three children, and 
you know, they're quite demanding and, and you, do you mean for Fiona, it's, 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 it's hard work, you know, it's, it's, it's great, but, it, you know, trying to deal with three of them and, you know, do everything involved with children, is, it's, it's a full-time job. So when AP eventually did retire, I mean, everyone had virtually, but he'd, he'd come in, taken his Brits off the last time, and people were virtually crowning new champion jockeys <laughs> straight away. Was, was, there, was there pressure on that side of it? Yeah, I think I, think I, 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 I was, even from when, he, when he announced that he was going to retire at Newbury, <laughs> I think that was probably the worst time from then to when he, at the end of the day at Sandown, when he did retire, because everyone kept saying, oh, you know, next year it'll, it'll be your turn. And, and you think, well, yeah, I've, I've, got, I've, I've, I've got to ride quite a lot of winners. <laughs> and then you start worrying about, well, if I get an injury, you know, you, you miss two months. And there's, there's always niggles in the back of your mind. And I, I didn't want to let people down because I thought everyone's, do you know what I mean, you know, not bigging it up, but saying, yeah, you know. Well, everyone wanted you're so popular. People I, I know, but you yeah, and I thought if I'm not, I'm going to be a bit of a bit of a failure, really. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, and I think obviously I was that season. It just literally everything went. It, it couldn't have gone any better. Um, but but also it, I had support off owners, trainers, yeah, other jockeys. Mm. Um, I, I felt um, I couldn't quite believe, you know, sort of the goodwill that I was being shown and. You know, even the the race goers from, like say Newton Abbott or Perth or Cheltenham or, you know, wherever I went, there was people, you know, saying, "Oh, you know, good luck with the season," and hope 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 you managed to do it. And, and I I was, I was quite touched by, you know, that that sort of took, I, I yeah that that sort of, not it was hard to deal with, but I I was quite shocked that there was quite so much. Support. <laughs> you, you won, you've won gold cups, you've won champion hurdles, you've won all the, you've won everything. But did that mean the championship? Did that mean more to you than, than any winner? Yeah, I know, definitely, yeah. And then that's not uh, knocking any, you know, because everyone, it, all, all those races are very special and, and, you know, highlights in their own right. But for me, the, I'd always, I don't know why, but I'd always wanted to be champion jockey. I, I think growing up, Peter Scudamore obviously is not that far from around here and, and, um, I just remember, obviously, lots of local people would talk about him because he was quite a local person, and obviously, you'd see the racing post of the Sporting Life on the kitchen table, and I think he was, you know, he, obviously he was being champion when I was sort of growing up. So in my in my head, I was thinking, I, I want to be champion jockey. You, you know, that's a dream, I suppose. And I think even from whenever I started, that was always my main ambition. And I don't know why, but that that was for me the the, the real thing I wanted to do. Um, it just took me quite a long time to get there. <laughs> Look, you, you mentioned injuries earlier on. I mean, that is part and parcel of being a jump jockey. You, you, you know you're going to come home in the ambulance at some stage. You, above everyone else, have put up with some unbelievable injuries and, and, and have carried injuries throughout your career. Um, yeah, but I think look, I'm only the same as everybody else. You, unfortunately... I don't think you are. I think you're, you're harder. You're, well, you're I think, yeah, but we, we all break bones, and unfortunately, as long as... Sounds up, but as long as you've got a, you break a bone that will commend, actually, I think most jockeys we're, we're always concerned on when we can get back rather than how long we're going to have off. Um, you know, it's it's you know which date you know it, it's, we'll, we'll be back in two weeks or four weeks or whatever else. And um, the worst thing for me, obviously, if you, you know well, my hip over the last five six years <clears throat> that that's deteriorated and it's just got harder and harder to deal with. And and that's one of those things that. It's no one's fault. It's just you know from another uh, uh, early uh, injury when I broke my leg twenty years ago, it, it's sort of been a, a slow growing, growing problem that, that obviously yeah, in the last five years it's <laughs> it's been quite quite painful. You play it down, but you need a hip replacement, don't you? Yeah, well I'll, I'll have them fairly soon, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you play it down. Oh well, yeah, over the last five years it's been a bit sore. You know you need a hip replacement, and you've carried on riding through that because. Obviously, you couldn't have it whilst you were riding. Yeah, well, they they did. To be fair, Jerry Hill, the BHA doctor now, he he did say, look, you know, there's certain ones you could have that that you can ride with. But I I just felt that I'd rather finish my career and then and then and then have it. But I've been very lucky. Um, I've got a family friend that she's a physio, and we've actually got children at the same school. And Kate, Kate Davis, and uh, I, I I sort of probably wobbled or huddled in in to pick up Casper one day from school and. She, she said, "Oh, what's what's you know what's wrong with you?" And I said, "Oh, just my hips a bit sore." And I, I thought I just pulled a muscle that wouldn't go away. And you know, lucky enough, she said, "Look, I, I'm something. It's, it's something more 
important or, or, or a bigger problem than that. So I, I went to see her and she put me in, spe in touch with a specialist as well to, to have it looked at. And then it sort of went from there. But again, she's been great in the fact that she's sort of, you know, given me exercises and, and, and you know, helped me deal with it as, as, as best I can, you know, to now really. But the, the, some of the younger jockeys, I know this, I can tell you now, they laugh at you when you're in the weighing room because uh, you're doing your yo yoga, you've got this sort of procedure before you before you went out to ride. Just explain that to us. Yeah, well, it, again, f through Kate, I, I didn't realise, but all my muscles on the one side had like, basically wasted away because, because it was sore and I left it. And I know you, obviously you shouldn't and you know that afterwards, but I sort of left it for six months and sort of just thought it would disappear. And, um, yeah, she, she sort of gave me these... Yeah, cross between exercise and Pilates and sort of stretches to do. Um, and yeah, it's sort of an exercise regime that takes, I don't know, 20 minutes. Um, but I, I do it every day. And again, it, it has literally, you know, I, I would have probably retired three, four years ago if it wasn't for, you know, for, for her putting that in place, really. When you weren't obviously this year going to be champion jockey, is, is, is that difficult to keep going? It wasn't difficult to keep going because I still had a great horse to ride and um, it, it's just, I, I, I don't like not being competitive. And even though you're competitive every day in a race, I, I, I enjoyed being, or, you know, I, I wanted to be top of the tree. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. that's, that's, and I think that was the only thing that I felt, you know, once I'd sort of half was thinking about, you know, retirement, I thought, well, actually, I, I'm not, you know, after Christmas this year, it was obvious that we, I wasn't competitive in, in the championship. So I thought, well, you know, yeah, the, t the time is right for me. And again, that's that's one other reason why I didn't want to, you know, go to Sandown because, you know, I wasn't going to be able to be competitive like that. And, and, and I didn't feel that, you know, that was the right thing to do. So, it, um, yeah, I think that's sort of the main thing, really. I remember looking at you getting legged up on a horse, and that's when you can tell if a jockey's uncomfortable, because when you've been legged into the saddle, you look fine in the saddle, but when you get, and I remember six months thinking, what am I going to say? Is it for me to ever say to you, for God's sake, man, give up? You know, and, but I suppose you have to sort that out in your own mind. You know, you, you have to make that decision. Yeah, I think, I think it's sort of that, that thing that, like, and I, the trouble was, I, I love love doing it anyway. Um, and like I say, yeah, my, my leg doesn't move as well now as it should do or, or used to. So there's certain things, and like you say, getting on a horse when you swing your leg over, that that was one of the aw most awkward ones because, yeah, it, it, well, it's just, yeah, it, do, it doesn't move like it used to. So, but actually, wait, well, once you're in the saddle ride and it, you, you're doing it absolutely fine. But I think, yeah, again, it, it sort of, I'd like to think I'm realistic that, you know, or sensible enough to, to, to know, you know, how you feel or what, what's going on. But I think, yeah, he, he, it's nice to be able to come to that decision on your own. And I didn't want to, you know, I definitely didn't want to carry on longer than, and I'm sure some people would think I should have retired five years ago. Because um, a lot of people think, I think a lot of people thought, well, after I was champion the first time, I was going to stop straight away. Um, but for me, I suppose, yeah, I, well, I was... I was I was where I, where I'd always wanted to be, and I didn't I didn't want to stop then. Um, <laughs> Don't blame me. But but I think yeah, it, it sort of hopefully it's come quite nicely over the last few months that actually thought this is the right time, and I think it's exactly the right time because you do, you see some you know, particularly boxers and and people that that sort of carry on that one fight that one ride that one drive too 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 far. Yeah, and I, I just I just feel that do you, you mean? with the support of Philip as well. Do you know I mean I've had such a great association with him and you know I didn't want him to be thinking, oh God Some of the may, 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 maybe you need a different jockey these days. Yeah. Um but again, you know, all those things, like, you know, for any jockey or any sportsman, you're you're always thinking, Oh God, I hope you know, if you have a bad day or a bad week and you can't ride a winner and you know, things haven't gone well and you think, oh people are thinking I I'm it's my fault or, you know, the horses I've run bad because I was in the wrong place or the wrong, you know, and, and obviously there, we come in and I, I, I can wish I'd done loads of things wrong, but you, you, I don't want people to think he shouldn't be doing it or he shouldn't be here. So I'm hoping that I didn't get to that point. But <laughs> at the same time, yeah, ho hopefully it sort of, it came at the right time for me to, yeah, to, to, to stop and, and, and hopefully look back on a successful career rather, rather than one that, 
yeah, do you mean sort of windled away into to nothing? How, how much will you miss the, the weighing room? Because people forget as well how old you are compared to... <laughs> no, you've got, you've got kids, you know, you know, Jack Tudor, James Byrne, all these kids coming through. You're, you're 20 years older than them. I'm, I'm more than that. You're more than that, yeah, you're more than that. Um, yeah, it, uh, the weighing room's an amazing... You, you know yourself, it's an amazing place because it's a very safe place as well. You know, if, when you've had a a really bad day or, or whether you have a bad fall or whether you you, know, you get beaten on a, a short price favourite or, you know, the day's gone badly, you come in there and you feel safe, you mean, your valets um, and you're the jockeys, no one judges you in there, you, you mean, you actually, you're surrounded by friends and it's quite a weird thing because we go out and com compete with each other every day, but actually in there, you know, everybody makes sure, you know, if someone's had a fall, everyone wants to check that person's okay. Everyone congratulates who's, who's won. You, know, you, you, you feel very safe, and I think that's. I can't really recreate that, you know, in, in, in any way going forward. But I've got you know so many friends that obviously have already retired, and, and you know I can I'll, I'll still go racing, I'll still see people. But yeah, that that way I mean, sort of atmosphere is, you know, very special. The jockey I know just up the road and he had had a few he got kept beaten on a few horses and he had you've just mentally it was just all getting on top of him and then he said that you just pinged him a text said hang on in there you're riding well it will come right and it meant so much to him you know so you i'm wittingly you probably you've become a bit of a father figure to a lot of a lot of the guys in there so it was a really touching thing to do yeah but i think you know again when i when i started you know i i remember like graham bradley and brendan powell and like obviously warren and you know there was lots, but you know Brad, Brad, you know, you know he'd often like go and all, you know any young lad that would come and sit down, he'd go up to him in his Yorkshire accent. I'm not even going to try and no. do, uh, you know, but he'd make you feel welcome, and I think that's, you know, that's a huge part of 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 you know anyway national hunt racing that I've seen, that you know as a young jockey you you, you feel welcomed into the sort of you know, group and then and also then when as you get older hopefully you can, you know, do that. It's almost like payback really. Yeah, you know, Dan Fort, former jockeys of Valet now and Ginge that were down in yeah. Newton Abbott. I've never seen it. They were crying. They were literally crying that that you, that you were going. But anyway we're moving. Yes, they stopped now. Yeah, no, 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 we're not going to get emotional. Look, of all the big ones, I'm not gonna go and list every single one, but I'm assuming looking out in the field there, it looks like trouble um out there. That gold cup was for your father in law well, subsequent far yeah, yeah. was was very special indeed. Yeah, and, and like I say, yeah, and just obviously as it turned out, do you mean obviously with Fiona and and yeah, so it was obviously a huge. You know, I, I was only you know I was very I think I was twenty two at the time. And it, do you mean it was you know I was young and just getting going, and you know obviously Anzin was sort of the year before, and then to, then to go and ride the Gold Cup in the following year. You know, and that you know, I started riding for Philip very soon after that as well, and just it was a real sort of catalyst into you know that next level of of horses you ride, and and yeah, it was just amazing really. And I think yeah, to have him here at home, I think he's twenty nine now, so he's incredible. Um, you know, he got Menorah out in the field with him as well now as a as a mate. So yeah, Jimmy, yeah, to look out, yeah, it was weird when you when you came, we looked across the field, and you, you see both of them in the sun. <laughs> like it, it is quite a special, you know. I'm very lucky to obviously. To, you know, have the farm here that we can we can do that, but it it does yeah it makes me smile, you know every day when you see them. When as I said, there are so many. Is there is a one that really stands out, or one meeting was Cheltenham the you know the mecca for you, or was it or was you know is there anything? Never um, won the national mind. I know. <laughs> Jim Jim, Jim Colotti broke my heart. <laughs> um, it's, it's very hard to, to say because literally there is so many great days and, and yeah, great memories that you know of of races and people involved and and uh, you know it's it's just yeah it's very difficult to 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 nail it down but I think when I won on Native River in two thousand and eighteen I think because of, you know I, it was eighteen years since it looks like trouble I think it really and obviously I was getting older and, and, and you know realizing that I can't do this for forever I think that I really appreciated that day you know and the emotion and, and Fiona was there and mum was there and just yeah you know, I remember sort of having 
get interviewed at, at, after the winning post and you know the jockey's saying well done and, and I remember thinking I, I, I'm going to take it, take it all in because I remember it looks like trouble it was brilliant I remember cantering back down the chute you know went in um, obviously celebrated but didn't I don't think I had no idea how hard it was to get a ride in the Gold Cup, let alone to win it um, and be in that position. So I think Native River, I, the whole day, I think I really sort of, yeah, I sort of took it all in and, and realised, you know, how lucky I was and, and you know. Richard, we are, it's a very structured life being a jockey. You know, you, you get up early, you ride out, you go to the races, you, you ride your horses, you come back, have your supper, go to bed and, 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 and repeat. Um, is that going to be difficult for you to 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 get out of that habit? Um, I think lucky enough, again, being on a farm and having you know plenty of horses here as well. Actually, I've, I've got so much structure and routine anyway, and with three children. Do you mean that I can imagine if I was you know living in a little house, you know, in a, in a city somewhere. I, I, I would be a bit lost because uh, you know you, you need some you do you need you need a reason to get up and and you know so, so, something to do every day and I think here I've got well I, I, I've never managed to get everything done yet so um, there's always something to do but again I think hopefully that will give me that bit more time now though to you know do things with the children spend more time with Fiona and you know you know almost see a bit more of you know a, a normal person's life. So is that what the future holds? Is it? I mean, I've, I've just been over there. There's, you've got a shed full of bullocks, and, and, and it's. But are you, uh, you're still going to be involved with horses. You, you breed as well, don't you? Yeah, we we started breeding now probably ten years ago, and um, we've six broodmares now, and, and that that's you know the bloodstock is one thing I want to hopefully do more of, and and you know that's another way of you know being still being involved in in you know in, in the racing industry, and you know that'll keep me involved hopefully with trainers and owners. That I've already dealt with, um, and it does actually. I, I when we started breeding, I, I I wasn't sure how I'd feel about seeing a horse run that I bred if I wasn't riding it. But actually, I get yeah quite a quite a buzz out of, of seeing a horse do well that you bred and 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 you know watching its career. So hopefully that's you know another thing that you know, I'm going to get pleasure out of sort of watching grow you know as as it goes. You've got plenty of land here. Of course, you could put a gallop in and start training. That won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Will it not? I, I, I've seen I've seen so many trainers that I think do you know do a fantastic job. It's a it's a very different. I, I think it's a very hard job, you know, to deal with owners, trainers, horses, you know, all together is huge. And and I think you know I've had a amazing career. I, I to start again, you know, to try and do that would be almost suicidal for me and um and again i i think you know i've got you know so many friends and you know that are trainers and i think you know i, I can hopefully if i can breed horses that they can train or you know can be involved with i think that's i'll get just as so much enjoyment out of that and and i think again being a trainer is is, is like a jockey it's 24 7 there's no respite and i think i've done it for 27 years i think you know yeah again Fiona and the children that they, they I couldn't I couldn't suddenly if I turned around to Fiona and said we're going to start training at the end of September I'm not I'm not sure how, how, how quick that car would leave leave the drive <laughs> so if you just had to sort of sum up your your career as a jockey what what would you you know would you is it, it's I mean it's just been it's just gone from one success to another really hasn't it yeah look I, I, I even now I, I can't believe I've been you know you expect to have a bad patch or a a lull I suppose um, and yeah for, for me I've, I've never really had to deal with that and, and again I think that's a huge everyone says oh you know you're so you know you enjoy it and you you, you know you're, you're not annoyed with people and, but I've got nothing to be annoyed about I, I mean I've you know I've just sort of it feels like I sort of fell from one one good job to another um, obviously when David Nicholson retired and I, I went to, you know I was riding for Alan King you know before he got bigger Richard Dunwoody unfortunately retired through injury and somehow you know Philip sort of asked me to start riding for him and it, it just that just worked Henry Daly I started riding for Henry when he started training I think 23 years ago you know I still I rode out for him on Friday morning and I've been there once a week or twice a week for 24 years and, and you know being having people like that around you and, and it, it's just given me 
yeah, I, I've, I've never really had to think or, you know, be concerned about what's going on. George, you're, you're a lucky man, aren't you? There aren't many people <laughs> in life can say that they've done something for this amount of time, enjoyed it, been successful at it, and, and just had a, had a really good time. Well, uh, again, I, you know, everyone's, yeah, sort of being so, so nice about me, and I, I feel slightly embarrassed because, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm the one, yeah, really needs to say thank you to, you know, trainers, owners, um, you know, the media that have always, you know, been very helpful to me. And I know, you know, not everyone has the same relationship with them, but I, I, I feel like, you know, you and, and everyone else has, has, has helped me along the way as well. And, you know, every, every race goer that has come racing and, and supports us and, um, and look, I'm sure they've been annoyed with me a few times as well, but, you know, on the whole, I've had support, you know, up and down the country, you know, through, throughout my whole career. And yeah, I'm the one that say, really needs to say thank you to everybody else.